New Jersey natives, Bill and Maureen, have just had phenomenal business luck. After a tour of Stockholm, they board a cruise ship for a 12-day celebratory cruise. But this will be the last vacation they ever take. Their best friends, neighbors, and sometimes business partners, Steven and Helga, join the party. But is their friendship really as good as it appears to be? Several nights into the trip, the weather's stormy, but Bill and Steven's activities aren't affected. All they want to do is watch a soccer game together on the television in the bar. Bill knows his ulcer will be irritated by alcohol and bar food, but he can't stop himself. The old friends hang out into the wee hours of the morning, but what secrets are these close friends keeping? from each other and their spouses. The men argue and Bill leaves angry. This will be his final exit. It's then that Bill realizes he's being followed by someone who wants to cause him harm. Jersey couple Bill and Maureen like to invest and have done well. Several years ago, they took a chance and purchased outright a small mine in Mexico. Their risk has paid off. The mine recently went public. The investment brings them into extraordinary wealth. The thing about Bill and Maureen is they're the most normal people that you'd ever meet, just regular people. They had their money worries just like everybody else. Then suddenly they come into money and they don't have to worry anymore. But money brings a set of new worries, as Bill and Maureen will learn soon enough. They look for a special place to celebrate their luck, to begin retirement and start a new life. They're very focused on the idea of Scandinavia for its wild beauty, rugged terrain, lush forests, and its abundance of wildlife. They've never tried to embrace the outdoors before in their lives, but aim to now. Steve and Helga are the friends of Bill and Maureen. They're also investors and they invest together in a lot of these companies, so they're here to celebrate. The one thing to note though is that Steve and Helga haven't done quite as well on their investments as Bill and Maureen have. The two couples are going to take a holiday together to celebrate Bill and Maureen's good fortune. Bill and Maureen announced the idea of embarking on a cruise starting in Stockholm and touring Scandinavia all the way to Russia. A trip that involves gambling or sports was more of what Steven and Helga expected for their friend's choice, not a Scandinavian cruise. But Bill and Maureen are set on the idea and have something else to share with their friends. Bill and Maureen have a pretty startling announcement. When the cruise is over, they're not going to come home. They're not going back to New Jersey. They plan to live out their dream, a dream that their friends didn't even know they had, and buy property in Scandinavia, moving there permanently. This is a big shock to their friends who feel like it's a rejection of their friendship. 
It's very unusual to make such a drastic move without ever seeing the place. Are they thinking clearly? You have to wonder because they've never seen Scandinavia before except for maybe brochures in the Travel Channel. They have no way of knowing about the logistics of moving there or if they're even going to like it. So their friends are understandably a little concerned with this dramatic announcement. But Steve and Helga reluctantly support their friends agreeing to travel to Scandinavia and take the cruise that will change everyone's lives forever. The best friends are splitting up. The cruise will conceivably be their last significant time together. Bill and Maureen begin in Stockholm because they're looking at properties and start the cruise there. I did notice a bit of a change in them after they got the money. It was like they were playing the part of rich people, and that's exactly the opposite of Bill. It was still them, just wearing nicer clothes. Eventually, they're joined on the cruise by Stephen and Helga in Helsinki. Steve and Bill have always gotten along very well. They're both happy, good time guys. They like to go out and have fun together. They've always had a great friendship. But after the announcement that they're going to be moving to Scandinavia, Bill seems to change quite a bit. And the friendship, their dynamics are evolving in a way that Steve doesn't quite like. I know that Bill stopped eating and drinking the way he used to. He got a peptic ulcer, which really put a stop to how much he could enjoy. Bill tries hard to avoid alcohol and spicy food as they irritate his ulcer, a task that's difficult to do on vacation. Over dinner that night, a touchy point comes up. Stephen and Helga wanted in on purchasing the mine, but Bill and Maureen did it on their own without telling their friends. Stephen wants to know why. The purchase is always a sore point, and the old bitter feelings emerge. After an airing of grievances, all is forgiven. But it's clear the couples just don't gel anymore. Even though Bill is doing his best to stick to this clean eating, it's hard when you're on vacation. You're on a cruise, you're surrounded by delicious food. He figures, what's the harm? You know, if I have a couple decadent meals, I have a little bit to drink, it's not gonna kill me. Bill tells the waitress his food is too spicy. The waitress reveals that Stephen has followed her to the kitchen and ordered the ribs to be made extra spicy. Stephen thinks his prank is funny. No one else agrees. Bill and Steve are good friends, but nonetheless, Steve likes to play practical jokes and Bill's often the butt of his jokes. The party breaks up for the night. Steve, you know, doesn't mean to, but inadvertently you know, causes a flare up in Bill's peptic ulcer, which causes him a lot of discomfort. Bill and Maureen complain about Stephen and Helga and how they have felt for a while that they no longer have anything in common. I heard later about the blow up between Bill and Stephen, and it was really sad. They had been close for years and really had so much in common. It must have really hurt Bill. The following day, the cruise ship hit stormy weather. And outdoor activities are restricted. Stephen seeks out Bill and makes a heartfelt apology for his behavior the night before. There's a soccer game on television in the bar, and he invites Bill to join him. The friends are in sync again. It's the old Bill and Steven. In the spirit of friendship, 
Bill vows he isn't limiting his diet, and Stephen can't resist his urge to play another prank. Steve's sense of humor seems quite cruel at times. What he thinks is funny is to aggravate his friend's very painful ulcer and make him sick. It's not exactly a joke that most of us would appreciate, let alone these two guys that already have tension between them. This is starting to really get on Bill's nerves. I mean, here it's his best friend. They're supposed to be having this great last cruise together before the couple moves to Scandinavia. And he keeps playing this nasty joke. Now, this is the second time after Bill's already been really upset. What's up with Steve? They're supposed to be friends. Why does he keep doing this? Peptic ulcers are very <laughs> uncomfortable. They can be quite painful. And in some cases, they can be quite dangerous if they start bleeding. They're basically open sores in your stomach, so they can cause a lot of health problems and tons of discomfort. Enraged by his so-called friend and having had too much to drink, Bill leaves the bar, eventually seeking fresh air. Bill ends up on the deck, coughing blood. The rain cools his fever. But soon, he senses someone nearby. And the figure follows him. Bill has a sense that there's something wrong. He can tell that he's being followed. Every now and then, he even gets a glimpse of a shadowy figure. He has a strong sense that something's not quite right. Bill finds himself pursued by what appears to be a shadow. But this is much more than a shadow. Maureen's long-shot investment in a South American mine pays off substantially. They decide to sell their New Jersey home. After their cruise, they mean to stay in Scandinavia. This means a break from their old ways and old best friends. On board the ship, Stephen starts pranking Bill, giving him spice, which he knows will upset the man's severe peptic ulcer. But the nasty prank does more than cause discomfort. <coughs> Bill begins coughing up blood. Bill thinks he knows what will ease his pain and stumbles toward the crew kitchen. Earlier that day, Bill had had some vanilla ice cream at lunch and this seemed to calm his stomach problems down. So now in his drunken state, in a lot of pain from overindulging and all of his friends' tricks with the hot sauce, He's in so much pain, he's just thinking that vanilla ice cream is the key. Vanilla ice cream is going to be the cure to what ails him. When Bill finds the door locked, he only hesitates for a moment. Even though there's 24-hour kitchen service on board, Bill decides to help himself. Bill devours the ice cream, and for a brief time, the cold makes his insides feel better. Then, Bill becomes overwhelmed by nausea. Bill's condition is serious, and now he knows it. Denial is a powerful thing, and in this case, Bill's finally in enough pain that he can't be in denial anymore. He realizes that all these warnings he's been getting from his doctors, his family and friends, have some validity to them. He really needs to start eating healthier and cut down on the drinking and take better care of himself. He must face the facts he's been told by friends and family, facts he's known for a long time. Bill has a problem with overindulgence and overconsumption. When he sees something he likes, Bill takes it.
and Bill doesn't like to be told no. Helga makes a startling announcement when she tries to diagnose Bill and basically says that all of his behavior is coming from an impulse control disorder. Since she has no medical background, there's no way she can authoritatively say that, but she makes this claim that it can lead to many compulsive behaviors, including sexual addiction, overeating, compulsive gambling, etc. Bill tends to just brush this off because Helga really has no authority to diagnose him. Even though impulse control disorder is notoriously difficult to diagnose, maybe there's a kernel of truth to what Helga's saying. Maybe just by looking at Bill's behavior, she's seeing a pattern that disturbs her. Bill must face the fact that he's pushed his ulcer to the limit. He becomes aware of a presence. But just as quickly, he is convinced the sensation was brought on by his illness. He knows he needs to get help. Back out on the deck, he has the same sensation of being watched, and something strange seems to be pursuing him. He runs. After a moment, Bill stops running. He sees nothing and is again certain his fear is a direct result of his ulcer attack. But then the shadow advances. It is real. Bill strains to see who it is. And abruptly, Bill is under attack. He seems to be hit from every angle. Weakness from his illness overtakes him and he falters on the ship's rails. The next morning, Maureen awakes and sees no sign that Bill returned to their stateroom last night. She hurries to hunt for him with a mix of worry and annoyance. She knows her husband was out drinking at the bar, so it's the first place she checks. Maureen demands to know where her husband is Knowing his tendency to overindulge, Maureen finds it difficult to believe her husband is still not drinking. Maureen knows the two men went to watch sports the night before, and she asks Stephen where Bill ended up. Stephen tells her Bill left the bar in the wee hours, but he doesn't remember much because he was drunk. Stephen, the Joker, repeats that he doesn't know where Bill is and adds that maybe Bill didn't leave the bar alone. There's a time for jokes and a time for humor, but when you're seriously concerned about your husband and you're looking for him, that's not a great time to crack jokes about, oh, there were too many beautiful women on the ship that he was involved with. This is very upsetting for Maureen, the things that Steve is saying to be funny, and she's just not in the mood to hear that sort of thing right now. It's very odd that Stephen won't answer her questions. He won't help her find her husband. It starts to make her wonder if there's more to this story than Stephen is willing to tell her. Maureen reports Bill's being missing to the ship's purser and he helps initiate an immediate search for Bill on the ship. When a search of the ship turns up nothing, a man overboard alert is given. When the search of the ship doesn't turn up anything and Maureen still can't find Bill, she returns to the bar and she goes and speaks with the bartender there and another patron. Their conversation turns into Maureen accusing them of knowing something about Bill's disappearance. And she ends up causing quite a scene and ultimately has to be removed from the bar.
the ship docks in St. Petersburg, Russia, and officials immediately bring Maureen, Stephen, and Helga in for questioning. The friends appear to know nothing about the disappearance of Bill. As part of the investigation into Bill's disappearance, they reviewed video footage from the surveillance cameras on the ship. And they do in fact find, although grainy and poor quality, uh, they do find images of Bill. The images they find are horrifying. No one expects what they're about to see. The camera does in fact capture what happens to Bill on the deck. It looks like he's being pursued by somebody on the ship, but they're unable to determine who it is. Bill and Maureen's old way of life is something they want to put behind them now that they're rich. They're on a Scandinavian cruise and don't intend to come back. Bill's old best friend Steven's prankster ways are not so funny anymore when he starts putting spice in Bill's food and his peptic ulcer erupts. Bill goes out on the deck in a storm and is stalked, chased, pummeled and cut by an unknown figure. Now he's missing. Authorities play security footage that shows Bill being followed by an unknown figure. The recording is of poor quality, and the storm makes the figure look eerily strange. Footage is pieced together of Bill pursued by the weird figure. Then, no more footage can be traced of how events transpire. It's not uncommon for an investigator to start by looking with the spouse or the intimate partner of a person who's gone missing. Meanwhile, Maureen is questioned by authorities. She opens up to them, revealing intimate details concerning their marriage. In this particular case, it doesn't take long to establish that there were problems uh, in Bill and Maureen's relationship. Maureen tells authorities that back in New Jersey, they used to party a lot and things could get out of control. Often when someone's being unfaithful to you, you have the sense that this is happening. You just know in your heart of hearts, even if you don't have proof. And this was the case with Maureen. Even though she had no proof that her husband was cheating on her, she always had a feeling there was something wrong. And now she finds out that there were other women. And this, of course, proves Helga right with her diagnosis of him as having impulse control disorder. A night in the New Jersey suburbs turns to chaos. But no one who knows Bill well is very surprised by this behavior. Bill often goes too far. There was always give and take between Bill and Maureen, but that's like most couples. But I think Maureen put up with a lot from Bill. I don't think he did things to make Maureen sad or mad. I think he just wanted to make himself happy. He just always wanted to have more. Bill's excessive eating and drinking catches up with him. His incidents of ulcer pain are more and more frequent. Bill is fully informed of the risks he runs if he continues his behavior. And Bill refuses to stop. 
Maureen tells the authorities that Bill's always had a tendency to push things too far. But the money that they've made, this was supposed to be a new start for them. They both agreed that they were going to lead healthier lives. This was going to be a completely different way of living for them. They were going to be healthy and happy. And their old friends were just a reminder of that life of excess that they really want to leave behind. In the end, that's why Bill and Maureen decide to move far away. Authorities interview Helga, who last saw Bill two nights ago. She knows nothing about Bill's disappearance, but it's clear that her husband has drawn suspicion on himself. Stephen's pranks on Bill, while perhaps to him seem good-natured, they probably went a little bit over the top, at least as far as Bill was concerned. And they could even be viewed as a, a form of assault because they did cause harm to Bill. And because of this, Stephen would now be considered a person of interest in this investigation. Stephen can't adequately explain why he was so cruel by pranking Bill when he was ill, except that Stephen genuinely thought it was funny. But then another lead develops. A crew member comes forward with information. She turns out to be the last known person to have seen Bill alive. The crew member is going off shift when she hears Bill weeping and discovers him in pathetic condition. The crew member is very concerned and walks Bill to the nearby ship hospital, where he insists on being left. The crew member confirms the fact that Bill is drunk and sick, and she has no doubt Bill is going straight to the doctor to be treated. However, she does report that Bill says, I don't think I can change at some point during their walk though she writes it off as drunken ramblings, as she doesn't know the man and what he's talking about. This information only confirms that Bill was quite weakened from his illness, an easy prey for anyone with a motive. Stephen remains the main person of interest in this investigation. Up until this point, given the fact that Bill is missing, Stephen has become the focal point of the investigation. Authorities go at Stephen tougher and question his relationship with Bill and Maureen. Finally, Stephen loses the energy to resist and breaks down. He admits that he and Maureen had an affair a few years ago, but it was brief and completely over. Helga is not enough woman for him, and Maureen was lonely. Stephen begs them not to tell Helga. Now authorities know that Maureen has been lying to them. What other information could she be hiding? And how can investigators uncover the truth? There's new evidence a body's been found. There's a report of a body in the water, and there's a chance it could be Bill. Unfortunately, no one will know until the medical examiner is able to do a full autopsy. It's going to take time to do a full report and make a formal identification to prove whether or not this is actually Bill. Bill and Maureen are newly rich and want to trade their old New Jersey lives for elegant Scandinavian personas. They embark upon a final cruise with friends. Once on the ship, Bill is stopped on deck during a storm and then pummeled by a mystery figure. Now a body is found in the water. Could it be Bill's? Investigators discover some disturbing history between Maureen and Stephen. It turns out that they used to have an affair. They've been hiding this from Bill. So you have an affair, and now you have Stephen tormenting Bill and causing his ulcer to hemorrhage. This doesn't look good for Stephen. Poor Maureen. Police inform Maureen they have found the body of her husband, Bill. 
It's revealed that the fall from the ship is what killed Bill. The impact of hitting water from that distance is almost like hitting a brick wall. It's really damaging. It's hard to survive it. But even if he had survived it, the likelihood of him being able to survive that much time in the open ocean is unlikely. Probably one of the most alarming parts of the investigation is that Stephen and Maureen have in fact had an intimate relationship. Maureen tells authorities that the two couples are best friends. They party together, invest together, but she feels the plain Helga is not a good match for Stephen, who is very outgoing. Maureen ends up meeting Stephen by accident one day, and they grab a friendly coffee together. She listens to his woes about Helga. They married young before he really knew himself. Maureen tells Stephen that Bill has affairs, and the two end up comforting each other over a few months. After a brief affair, Maureen breaks it off with Stephen because she finds that what she's doing is morally wrong, but Stephen doesn't want to stop. He becomes agitated that Maureen could consider leaving him. Maureen tells Stephen to pretend like everything is normal and to forget that their affair ever happened. Maureen tells officers that Stephen stalked her after she broke it off with him. It's difficult to end an affair, but this is even worse because as soon as Maureen ends the affair, she has the sense that she's being followed. She can tell that someone's always watching her. That's very unsettling, especially when you're dealing with emotional stress, as she was. She saw him numerous times. He was always lingering in the fringes, just like the person on the surveillance video. Maureen wants authorities to understand she meant no harm to Bill by having an affair. She was only lonely, and she clearly picked the wrong man for discretion. Authorities want to know if she ever reported the stalking to police. Establishing a motive for killing someone is one of the primary parts of an investigation like this, and often human emotion is one of the strongest motives that we can come across. In this particular case, love or hate, they're both intertwined here, potentially. The fact that Stephen and Maureen have been discovered to have had an extramarital affair with each other certainly adds to the fact that Stephen is a suspect. Does Maureen hate her husband enough to have him removed from the picture? Is Stephen upset about Bill's success in terms of their investments? These are all different motives that could lead to murder. Although investigators have learned a lot about the two couples' relationships, no concrete evidence has been found to definitively point at one person who killed Bill. And so the interrogations continue. Maureen tells authorities Bill is out of control with women throughout their entire marriage. I think Bill did have a wandering eye when it came to women, but I never heard him talking about Helga. Maureen reports that after their affair, she suspects Stephen hates Bill. Maureen is sure the police will find that Stephen killed her husband. He's so deluded and obsessed with her, he probably decides he'll get Maureen and her money, if he can only get rid of Bill. Maureen's pretty sure that Stephen is obsessed with her and then he thinks that if Bill is of the picture, he will get her and all of the money. So she's certain that Stephen is the one that killed her husband and thinks that she can convince the police of her theory. Maureen is sure the police will find Stephen killed her husband. is a cheat in his marriage, but his wife Maureen and their best friend Stephen are also having an affair. Stephen doesn't like it when Maureen breaks things off, and he's been playing cruel pranks on Bill that make him seriously ill. Bill goes missing off a Scandinavian cruise, and his body is found by Russian Coast Guards. 
Authorities hammer Maureen for details on her affair with Stephen, believing she is a prime suspect in his murder. But Maureen thinks Stephen did it, and she has proof. Maureen is certain that it is Stephen who kills Bill to get back at her and to get her fortune. And she tells authorities why she's so convinced. Even though Maureen breaks off their affair, Stephen never stops texting her. She won't respond, but once they are on the ship together, the texting intensifies. Right away, he begs for a private meeting. She refuses, but he threatens to reveal the affair to their spouses. So Maureen takes a meeting with Stephen against her better judgment. Stephen tells Maureen they need to make a decisive move. He's ready to reveal their affair to their partners and divorce so they can marry each other. Maureen is horrified by the level of Stephen's delusion. She tells him that their brief affair was a mistake and she'd never leave Bill. She insists Stephen put the idea out of his mind immediately. But Stephen warns Maureen that they will be together soon, one way or the other. Maureen tells police that Stephen's determined to get her back, and it's the idea of getting his hands on her newfound fortune that is driving him to the edge. She often gets the sensation that she's being followed on board. And just two days ago, her suspicion was confirmed. The concept behind being a stalker is that nobody knows you're doing it. Typically, it's someone that knows you or has a particular fascination with you. Occasionally, it's completely random, but often there is a connection. Even though Stephen is married to Helga, and he and Helga are friends with Bill and Maureen, uh, Stephen has developed this unhealthy infatuation with Maureen. Stephen tells Maureen that she's coming back to him, and Maureen refuses. Quick thinking gives Maureen a moment to get away. Maureen reveals that she thinks Stephen is deranged enough to kill her husband just to get back at her, just out of spite, that this is the kind of person he is, that he's just hiding a malicious nature with these jokes of his that really aren't that funny. Stephen fiercely denies everything Maureen has said. He tells authorities that she is a liar. Stephen has a different story to tell. He points the finger back at Maureen. He says that Maureen wanted another life with him, that she just couldn't forgive Bill for his infidelities, and that she urges him to kill her husband so he could share in this new life with her and all the money, divorcing Helga. But he says that he just couldn't do it. He couldn't go through with it. He's not a killer. He urges the police to check Maureen's stateroom for blood. Authorities check the room for blood and find it everywhere. Stephen knows Bill's a powerful man and Maureen could never overpower him. But he thinks it's likely she did something in their room to additionally irritate his ulcer, weakening him to a point where she can easily throw him overboard. Investigators in looking into this have discovered blood in uh, Bill and Maureen's room. And Maureen explains that it's because Bill has a peptic ulcer and he had vomited. And because of the vomit, there was blood present. Both Maureen and Stephen accuse each other of the crime. Are they trying to frame each other to protect themselves? But new evidence is about to emerge. A passenger has seen something that she thinks she should mention. She has no idea. It's the one detail that will crack the mystery wide open. Responding to a call put out by ship authorities for information in the death of Bill, a passenger comes forward to report that she sees Bill the night he disappeared. He was drunk and talking to a woman. 
By description, that woman turns out to be Helga. Police bring in Helga for a second interview. Investigators ask Helga outright if she had anything to do with Bill's disappearance. They're shocked by what she reveals and that she actually answered them completely honestly. She admits she had a run-in with Bill. She says her altercation was coincidental, but ended up having a fatal result. Helga says she approached Bill on several occasions to talk about why he dissuaded her and Stephen from buying into the mine investment. It wasn't fair that they were cut out of the riches and Helga feels they should be compensated. Helga tells authorities that Bill always refuses to discuss the matter with her. On the night of the disappearance, she isn't going to take no for an answer. She wants him to respond. We discover now that Helga has been stalking Bill and paying very close attention to what he's been doing. In fact, it appears she's just waiting for the right time to strike. darkness and Bill's illness prevents him from seeing who his pursuer is until it's too late. Helga never got over the fact that they were cut out of the deal that ended up making Maureen and Bill a lot of money. She's even angrier that Bill would never discuss it with her, never give her an apology or an honest explanation. She just couldn't let that go. Helga admits to authorities she hits him in the head with her purse repeatedly on a low rail deck. The clasp from her bag cuts Bill's skin. He's blinded and weak, and he falls overboard. Helga tells police that she is shocked the blows sent him overboard. Investigators at this point are trying to figure out what the real motivation is because it appears that Helga isn't even aware of the extramarital affair between Bill and Maureen. Even though they've been friends for 20 years, Helga really started to dislike Bill. She started to see signs of greed in him that she really didn't care for. Even so, even with this dislike, she says that the fall was accidental, that she didn't actually mean to kill him. As the investigation came to its conclusion, Helga maintained that Bill's fall was purely accidental. Not only is Helga taken away by the authorities and charged with murder, she also has to face the facts that her husband had an affair on her, which she's in deep denial about. Thank you.